Increase. Molecular testing, first line of testing is the way to go. First line of molecular testing. In Ghana, for drug resistance, for all TB cases, the first line is 100% um, molecular testing for Ghana. And it's a big achievement. Uh, whilst other countries are still struggling using the microscope, microscopy as the first line of test. Some are doing a hybrid, combining molecular and then um, microscopy. Ghana is 100% testing. So in 2022, we have moved to treatment success in drug resistant TB from 55% in, in, in 2018 to 82% in 2022. This is a huge one when it comes to multi-drug resistant treatment. TB is not just a medical disease, it's a social disease, and therefore we must all take part and support. The resources of 20 million a gap, what do we need them for? This is translated into, into molecular testing, so we need more molecular testing. This is translated into digital x-ray. We need more, particularly among children, who swallow their spitting. So we need newer technology. So the 20 million gap, actually, about 85% will go for diagnostics. The rest of the 15% will go for programmatic interventions. We need support. Welcome, friends. We have amongst us Dr. Yo Adusi Poku. He's a senior physician specialist for public health, and more importantly, he is also the program manager of National TB Control at Ghana Health Service. Welcome, Dr. Yo. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for thank inviting you. me. Uh, without any further ado, Dr. Yo, please tell us to what extent Ghana has uh, you know, progressed in terms of ending TB and being on track to end TB. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me once again. And I'm very, very grateful. On behalf of the National TB Control Program Ghana, we are very, very grateful. So the first thing is that for all countries, molecular testing, first line of testing is the way to go. First line of molecular testing. In Ghana, for drug resistance, for all TB cases, the first line is 100% um, molecular testing for Ghana. And it's a big achievement. Uh, whilst other countries are still struggling using the microscope, microscopy as the first line of test. Some are doing a hybrid, combining molecular and then um, microscopy. Ghana is 100% testing. We have also, because we don't have all the gene aspects for the molecular testing every district, we have 160 nine out of 261 districts. So what we have done is to improve using the sample transportation system. We have about thousand, over thousand uh, health facilities that see more than thousand patients in a year. So we have mapped all this and we, we collect samples. When we screen, we collect samples and transport to the facilities that have the molecular testing, the gene expert testing. So this is a very good achievement when it comes to case finding. And more especially when we have a treatment gap, a huge one. And, and if you come to drug um, treatment as well, so this is case finding for treatment. Treatment outcome, treatment success rate is more than 85% now. And so, so for all those that we diagnose, we make sure that we come about 85%, if we have 100%, 85% of them treat uh, from, that is 2010. In 2022, we have reached 87%. Okay, so we are on course. Coming to drug resistant TB, what has gone well for us? We are making sure that gene expert is the first line of testing, and therefore we don't start treatment blindly. We start treatment when we are diagnosed with pampersin resistance first. And then so we move the treatment success rate move from in 2018, we're doing 55% because that is when the facilities were getting used to gene experts. And then we have moved up to 82%. In 2022, we have moved to treatment success in drug resistant TB 
from 55% in, in, in 2018 to 82% in 2022. This is a huge one when it comes to multi-drug consistent treatment. When it comes to comorbidities, comorbidities, infection with TB, HIV, uh, and then other risk factors like tobacco, alcohol, malnutrition. You see, if you come to HIV, for instance, in 2018, we're doing um, 21%, as, uh, uh, but we have moved to 40% in 2022. 21% as a co-infection co co -infection rate. It has decreased from 21% to 14%. Clearly, when it comes to latent TB, latent TB is a critical area where now the strategy is that for all people who are contact of TB patient, you must make sure that you put them on TB preventive therapy and so that in five to 10 years time, they don't, they, they don't turn up to, be, to have the disease. We started with 30% um, um, when we started, and now we have gone as far as 95% coverage in TB preventive therapy. The issue has always been funding. Funding, apart from global fund, there's, there's no fund, unlike, unlike other countries where we have funding, USID supporting Ghana, uh, sorry, other countries, and then um, PEPA and all that. That is not so in Ghana. Ghana, the external, the only external financier is the global fund. So this is what I, I want to say now when it comes to uh, the successes that we have had in terms of the TV program. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yaw. This is really very, very uh, inspiring to me to hear that 100% uh, molecular testing is being done in Ghana. We, I come from India. In India, uh, in 2022, 23% uh, people with presumptive TB got uh, molecular tests. So 77% had to uh, take a sputum microscopy. So you know the, there is a long way. India has come forward, but it's a, still a very longer way to go ahead. We need to ensure that every person who has uh, who needs to be screened for TB must be done like is is being done in Ghana uh, with the molecular test. So in India, uh, Doctor Yo, the uh, most of the molecular tests which are being done are being done on the only uh, WHO approved point of care and decentralized test, which is the uh, called TrueNet. And of course, we also have Gene Expert and LPA. So, but most of the tests are on TrueNet because it's point of care and decentralized. So I personally saw it working in a PHC. Thank you so much. So um, this is a country where, as you know, we started with the gene experts. We will really want to include other molecular testing. We have considered true nuts. We are also considering other ones that are in the system coming from other countries. But we haven't started yet. Now it's about gene experts. And the reason is this. We had uh, opportunities to write proposal COVID-19, the other side of the, the good thing, the other side of COVID-19 was the pandemic um, funds that we, and we wrote that using um, for gene experts and the color machines. At that time, we're not so, uh, um, 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 I mean, TrueNAT, well, Kenya was using TrueNAT at that time, uh, has been using TrueNAT, but it, it, it takes time to get used to uh, so, but now, this is what we are considering to do now. Yeah, but not now. It's not in country now. Thanks a lot for that. So you said that uh, the treatment success rate for drug resistance to TB uh, shot up from 50 some percent to 82 percent. This is remarkable. Yeah. That, that uh, you know. So is it because of the shorter regimens which are being used, the latest ones uh, in Ghana? Can you please elaborate, sir? Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. A couple of things. Uh, we set up a task force, uh, basically, to make sure, and then we had our real-time uh, detection alerts. We call it System 1 in Ghana. Once you, you, you detect uh, your campus resistance quickly, we track you. Uh, our TV coordinators are on standby to make, uh, make sure that you are quickly enrolled onto treatment. And thanks to Global Fund, we also the enablers package. That, that, that is on. What we do now is that once you are diagnosed, we send the full package to you, thanks to Global Fund, 
for you to do laboratory testing and then to also use them as out of pocket expenses. So these are a constellation of factors. The fact that one, one initial default rate is kept as minimal as possible because we have sensitized all our regions to ensure that once a case is diagnosed quickly, so we have a task force. And then we also have a national health insurance, free national health insurance uh, scheme for our TB patient. So once you are diagnosed, you are put on TB quickly. That is so important. We also have um, our, for the intensive phase, we give you therapeutic blend blended food to sustain you because most TB patients don't eat. Most of them are, are very malnourished. So we have that going for us. And we also make it clear that TB is a, is a, is a family issue. It's not just a one individual issue. So we, we go to the family and we cancel the whole family. But take care of this. We try to be stigmatized as, 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 as much as possible so that the patient can, can complete treatment. More importantly, we have a strong community affected population, a network who makes sure that once you are diagnosed, quickly they take you up. These are civil society groups. They take you up, counsel you, and make sure you, you complete treatment. Make sure that you do your follow-ups. These are clear uh, milestones that we have. And so this has helped so much. There's a, the advocacy, the sensitization, when it comes to the shorter regimen, we have been using the 11 to uh, 9 to 12 months regimen, 9 to 11 month regimen. We are now transitioning to the six months, the BIPAL M. Uh, so we have a plan. We have met the TB advisory board who has given us the, 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 the green lights to, to start transitioning. So for the six months, we haven't started yet, but for the 11 to 12, nine to nine to 11 months, that is what we are using. And is the task force and the collaboration of civil society and family members is what is working. Thank you so much, Dr. Yaw. This is really amazing to hear, uh, you know, the kind of success rate which can come. What should happen in next 90 months? Because 90 months are left to 2030, so that Ghana can, uh, you know, accelerate its uh, progress towards NTB goal. Yeah, very good question. We, and we want to take a cue from India, where you come from. The government is part of the solution. He has taken it upon himself. I was looking at your data capture, India data capture. We asked um, the, the program manager of India, how come you have this robust data capture? And he said that the government paid of the $3 million that was meant, the government paid 85% of this. So we are coming back to Ghana. We want the president, the, His Excellency, the president, so we want to take advantage of the United Nations high level meeting that is about to come on in September and impress upon the president that one president, you need to uh, attend, your excellency attend this meeting. And therefore we have started engaging him on his commitments. We don't want TB to only become a medical disease. When it becomes a medical disease, all the stakeholders say that yes, do well. I mean, this is medical. Uh, uh, Ghana Health Service, Ministry of Health Ghana, take care of this patient because they are your job. No, we are. We let. We want to speak the politicians' language. We want to tell the president that Your Excellency, TB has a high impact on society. It has a high impact on children who will be the future leaders, the vulnerables, the vulnerable in the society, the prisoners. And all the groups, the minors, and therefore we want to invite the private sector in. If we, we, we want to say in the, in, the, in the language of equity and justice, that is what the politicians understand, equity and justice. And therefore, private sector must come in. Why are they coming in? Because uh, TB disease affects minors. We have what we call the, the post lung disease. It's uh, mostly coming from the mining area. And that is why they generate a lot of income. So why can't you buy gene for the whole population? So we want to approach this 
with the with the mind that TB is a social disease. It affects every person of, of, of the population. We what we want to disaggregate our data according to occupation and know that and let the president know that we have soldiers, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have all manner of professions in those that we are treating. Again, we also want to say that it is curable. We also want to have a multi-sectorial accountability framework. Mr. President, you are under your, under your leadership. We want to have an account, account, accountable um, uh, framework that we can monitor. So TB disease is multi-sectorial, and we also want to have a social component. We want TB patients to enjoy, enjoy some of the social uh, uh, opportunities that are in, like the livelihood empowerment against poverty schemes. TB is a, is a, is a, is a poor, poor disease, and therefore they must also enjoy that. We want the president to commit 100% to newer technologies, especially for children, newer technologies and, and for, for data capture. So this in a nutshell is what we want the president to, we want to involve the president. Once the president speaks, it becomes po a, a policy. Once the president speaks, other stakeholders will come in and say, okay, we have a part to play in the president's speech because we have now realized that TB is not just a medical disease, it's a social disease. And therefore we must all take part and support. That is how come Dangote can, in Nigeria, can donate about 91 genesis for the country. Of course, we are talking about 91. So that will be 91 true nuts, 91 bowel sensors, 91, uh, what do you call it, and, and uh, genesis. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Yaw. TB is a social disease. I think this message really needs to cut across. It's uh, it's not just a medical disease. It's not just uh, needs a medical solution. It is a social and political uh, response as well. So uh, any last final thoughts, uh, Dr. Yaw, before we wrap up? Thank you, Bobby. My last is this. We need resources. If you look at our national strategy plan, we have a gap every year of $20 million. Our only financiers are the global fund. Unlike other countries who are supporting the private sector and so on, we don't have that. So clearly, this is where we come from. The resources of 20 million a gap, what do we need them for? This is translated into, into molecular testing. So we need more molecular testing. This is translated into digital x-ray. We need more, particularly among children who swallow their spitting. So we need newer technology. So the 20 million gap, actually, about 85% will go for diagnostics. The rest of the 15% will go for programmatic interventions. We need support. Thank you so much, Dr. Yo, again. Um, the very, uh, very important words and really hope um, this happens. Thanks a lot. Really insightful to talk to you. So friends, we were listening to Dr. Yo, who is the National TB Program Manager in Ghana. He has been leading the TB response for quite a while and uh, he's part of the Ghana Health Services. So thanks a lot, doc Dr. Yo. Let's hope your message reaches the UN high level uh, meeting and uh, 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 really pray that uh, your, your call to have the highest level political uh, uh, you know, commitments to TB also uh, bears fruits. So, so thanks a lot and all the best to you, Dr. Yaw. Thank you, thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you.